Uh, again today we're reporting no new cases of COVID-19. Uh, this encouraging news means that New Zealand's combined total of confirmed and probable cases remains at 1,497, of which 1,147 are confirmed. So we now have 1,042 people who have been confirmed as having recovered from COVID-19, an increase of 12 on yesterday, and the overall percentage increases to 94%. Again today there are just two people receiving hospital level care, neither are in ICU. Uh, we still have the 16 significant clusters, four of which, as you know, are closed, and there are no additional deaths to report today. Uh, yesterday, our laboratories across the country uh, processed 5,961 tests, and our total now is 203,045 processed. So this milestone of 200,000 tests, uh, which is just over 4% of the population, is a significant achievement. I want to recognise everybody who has been tested, uh, as well as the many, many people across the system who have facilitated that happening. It's a, a, an incredibly important pillar of our uh, response to COVID-19. Uh, as we prepare for Level 2 tomorrow, the sense of anticipation is both palpable and understandable. We're looking forward to re-establishing some of the routines and rhythms of our near normal lives. Uh, good hand hygiene continues to be uh, paramount, simplest and most effective tool we have to keep COVID-19 at bay. Social gatherings are a maximum of 10 people at once and please keep track of where you have been to help us with contact tracing in case it is needed. So today's uh, figures do reinforce that we are on the right path, that uh, we, have, uh, we are maintaining the gains made through alert levels four and three, and we're heading for success. But as you will have seen overnight from other jurisdictions, uh, this is a stubborn virus, and we don't want to be going down the path where we see spikes again. So we can't afford to give away the progress we've made, we need to remain vigilant. I do want to speak to some of the hardest parts of the alert level framework and these parts have been difficult through the entirety of our response to COVID-19 um, but are particularly pronounced at alert level 2 and they are namely um, funerals uh, and tangihanga. This morning uh, we've instigated calls uh, between um, church leaders, um, Dr Bloomfield and myself were part of a call this morning, funeral directors um, and iwi leaders to see if we can find a way to further satisfy health concerns which are legitimate, particularly given that we have seen overseas in particular research demonstrating that funerals and weddings have been part of the spread of COVID-19 in many countries, but also recognise that funerals in Tangi are exceptional. They are life events that cannot be postponed. I do believe that we are well on our way to finding a solution that will meet both of these concerns. And I expect the Minister of Health will have more to say on that before um, the end of the day. It will still mean that there will be, of course, still restrictions, um, but we are working hard to see if we can find ways to accommodate some of the concerns that have been raised uh, within the capacity of the Ministry of Health to help give the reassurance that some of those issues can um, be managed. Tomorrow afternoon, Budget 2020 will be delivered within the most challenging economic conditions faced by any government since the Great Depression. The global COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a global economic shock, not of our making, but like every country in the world, we are also not immune to its fallout. Now, let me be clear, the coming months and years will be some of the most challenging our country has faced in a very, very long time. The International Monetary Fund predicts the global economy will contract by 3% in 2020, much worse than during the global financial crisis. Around the world, unemployment will rise significantly. Businesses will fail and close. Government revenue will decline. And we will feel the pain here too. New Zealand is about to enter a very tough winter. But every winter eventually is followed by spring. And if we make the right choices, we can get New Zealanders back to work and our economy moving quickly again. 
Today, I want to set out the values that underpin our economic response to the virus and signal how we intend to tackle it. Firstly, though, the best economic response to the virus was always going to be a strong health response. Going hard and early means economic opportunities and faster than many trading partners. I know the last seven weeks have been a huge challenge to business, which is why the first phase in our economic response has been entirely focused on assisting business to stay afloat and supporting New Zealanders to stay connected to their jobs. I'm enormously proud of the work Finance Minister Grant Robertson and Social Development Minister Carmel Cipollone did with a wage subsidy scheme. This nearly $11 billion investment has ensured that over a million and a half workers have stayed employed and connected to their jobs during the toughest period of the lockdown, while providing a guarantee to businesses to keep going as they can start to get back on their feet at level two. Sitting alongside the wage subsidy has been the largest suite of business tax changes in modern history, aimed at freeing up cash flow to support businesses when they couldn't trade. And our no interest loan scheme provides much needed cash for things like rent and other costs as they get up and running. These measures have worked so far. Our unemployment rate, it will sadly increase, but it has not to and Treasury scenarios suggest that because we stayed at level four and three for a shorter period of time, our unemployment rate could end up at a lower, the lower end of their projected ranges. Dealing to the virus quickly also allows other economic opportunities, a possible trans-Tasman bubble, when SAFE could see New Zealand and Australia opening up greater tourism and trade opportunities while our borders have to stay closed to the rest of the world offering some additional reprieve for our tourism and hospitality industries. But the next stage in our journey of rebuilding together is recovery. Our focus now is the jobs and incomes of businesses and New Zealanders. Budget 2020 is but the first step in this phase. In normal years, the budget sets out the government's economic plans for the following year in detail, but this budget is different. It is not business as usual. Instead, it is a tailored solution to a unique situation. There is no playbook for the recovery we are about to embark on, but nor do we need one. When it has come to COVID-19, we have carved a path based on our people, our health system and our economy. And now that is exactly what we will do again as we recover and rebuild. Let me say from the outset, the team and I will bring the same determination and focus to the economic rebuild as we brought to our health response. To start that phase, we need to consider what our objectives are and the best steps to achieve them. The Finance Minister will set out much of this tomorrow, and I won't preempt anything he has to say on that, but today I can set out what we are trying to achieve and the values that we bring to the work. The first thing you'll notice is that we believe when times are hard, you don't cut, you invest. We will run the ruler over every line of expenditure. No question we need to ensure that our expenditure provides value for money and supports our primary goal of jobs. But the notion that at this time of need we would make cuts to the essential services so many New Zealanders need more than ever is not only immoral, it's economically wrong. That's why yesterday we made the biggest investment in health funding in two decades. It's why on Monday we delivered pay equity for early childhood teachers. It's why one of the first things we did when the virus hit was to increase benefits to ensure those who lost their job and more to help them through. Now more than ever, we need our schools and hospitals, our public houses and roads and railways. We need our police and our nurses, and we need our welfare safety net. We will not let our team of five million fall when the times get tough. Instead, we will strengthen the blanket of support that government is here to provide. We are rebuilding together, not apart. These foundations are essential, they are our base, but on top of them, we must build the things that accelerate employment, empower businesses and stimulate our productive economy. A relentless focus on jobs, the economy and businesses is what's required now for the wellbeing of New Zealanders. Projections suggest our economic shock could be sharp, but hopefully short. That means we need a plan to get us through the worst and position us well for recovery. The biggest fiscal asset we currently have to get us through the worst is the government's balance sheet. 
Due to our prudent economic management of the books, heading into lockdown, we had debt under 20% of GDP, lower than what we inherited it at, low unemployment around 4%, and a AAA foreign currency rating from Moody's. I defended the surpluses we ran in our first two budgets on the basis that we needed to prepare financially for a rainy day. Well, that day has well and truly arrived. The government's ability to borrow at very low interest rates places us in a strong position to weather the economic storm ahead. But more than that, we are well positioned to use our balance sheet to shelter New Zealanders from the worst impacts of the fallout and in doing so protect jobs and grow our economy. Our number one priority is jobs. And that's why this will be a jobs budget. That means doing all we can to support people staying in their current job or moving to a new one if needed. And the reason for that is simple. It harks back to the sentiment of Norman Kirk that all anyone ever really needs is something to do, somewhere to live, someone to love and something to hope for. Employment helps form a foundation. It supports families. It pays the bills. It helps provide self-value and worth. And when times are tough like this, workplaces can provide an important support network. Our plan is to invest. By investing, we will create jobs and get the economy moving again. Just as the rising tide lifts all boats, a growing economy has the ability to support us all and allows us to bring the government book back, books back into the black. Now, this is not going to be the work of just one budget. It will require relentless focus on growth and jobs and not just growth for growth's sake, but in a way that acknowledges we have challenges to our environment, to our well-being, that we can also use this time to help resolve. Tomorrow you will see how we will start to do that. But in the same way that we have fought the virus together, we also need to start our rebuild together. That will take all of us. In the coming month, the government will launch a comprehensive engagement program that will pose a simple proposition. Look at what our team of five million achieved together in beating the virus. Now what can we do together to get our economy moving again, to look after our people, and rebuild in a way that makes things better than they were before. That will, of course, include the business community, but it will be broader too. If anything, the last few months have shown us that united we are a formidable force. When we channel our energies into a goal collectively, we are stronger for it. Prior to the virus, we faced serious long-term challenges, persistent inequality, poverty, the threat of climate change, the need to diversify the economy, low productivity, limited domestic manufacturing and an abundance of low-paid jobs. Do we return to those settings or is now the time to find a better way? There are tough times to come, but we have experienced tough times before. And when confronted with external crisis, be it a Great Depression, a world war, or now a global health pandemic, our instinct has been to come together as business, as community, as iwi, as New Zealand. And we will again. We will use the strength of our economic position as government to carry the load while businesses and households get back on their feet. The situation is constantly changing and the future may feel uncertain, but as I said right at the beginning, we have a plan. We know it will be tough, but we will get through it the same way we got through the past two months, together.